All right. So, hello everyone. It is noon. Um, well, let's get uh, started with our workshop about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, yet again, this is those of you who've been joining regularly. This is a little bit of an experiment because we are live streaming and in person. Our wonderful Stacy, who has joined us, um, and also recording. And so I'm trying to stay in the line of sight of the camera and quilt my normal tendency to walk about the room when I present. We also have, uh, by way of e-introduction, because he is upstairs, a new administrative assistant at Sanford who for the first time is helping me moderate. So I'm running the slideshow while he is in the chat and taking care of all the needs of you online folks. So know that that's going on for the first time. We're doing our best to make it all smooth. We've had a couple dress rehearsals, but if there's a glitch or two, uh, bear with us. We will have it fixed for the next time. So we are talking today about peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising. And by way of introduction, this is the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy at City University. And I was mentioning a little earlier when I was chatting with some of the folks who are online early that our Institute is funded by a very enlightened patron in San Diego. His name is Denny Sanford, and he recognized that the nonprofit sector needed some support. And he decided to fund several fundraising institutes around the United States and provide, you know, staff and resources. And we are affiliated with National University in San Diego, California, where I just was last week for three days of how to be a better facilitator and teacher, which more guinea pig ideas for you all. I'm trying out all my new learnings to make it just as good as it can be. So our mission is to help nonprofits significantly increase their impact and capabilities by providing free or low cost, I'm paraphrasing a tiny bit, uh, fundraising training to the nonprofit community. Um, and we do this through workshops, webinars, all kinds of conferences, anything we can do that, that offers people good training around the relationship cycle, which most of you as fundraisers are probably familiar with. The donor relationship cycle is three phases, eight steps, all the way from identifying your donors to stewarding and thanking them and reporting on their investment. So I am, uh, is it advancing? I am Angela Beard. I uh, have been the director of the Institute since last July, and I have a long and <laughs> I like to laugh about it, checkered past in the nonprofit community. It's the only sector I've ever worked in. I started fundraising as a grant writer for Pacific Northwest Ballet, and today I have almost, yikes, 30 years experience in nonprofit fundraising and strategy. I also have a few degrees, and when I was in school, I started learning how to teach. So when I finished my PhD, I came back to Seattle and started as an adjunct at Seattle University, where I went to full time for a couple of years. And now, and Whitney was one of my students. Whitney, raise your hand. Um, and now I am over here at City University, running the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy. It's kind of a perfect match. My fundraising and academic make me, I hope, <laughs> well suited for this role. And it brings me a great deal of satisfaction to be able to present free and low cost fundraising training to all the people out there doing the good work. So thank you for helping me help you. All right. So before we begin, just a few housekeeping notes. There is time at the end for Q&A. And when that time comes, you'll see a slide with all the question marks. You can either type your questions into the chat box, raise your hand, or unmute yourself to speak and ask the question. Austin will be moderating, so he will uh, keep track of everything that everybody wants to know. I will, after this presentation, mail, email the slides and the link to the recording for you. So you can have that if you have to step out or want to share it with a friend or whatever, that's great. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that I am on the Give Big Advisory Council. So this peer-to-peer -peer fundraising workshop was intentionally planned for anyone participating in Give Big who might want to have peer-to-peer -peer on their as part of their fundraising plan. 
Um, so along the way, I'll probably note a few things that are in place already for you. Like you have a platform, you don't have to choose one. You've been given messaging, you don't have to develop graphics, that kind of that thing. Um, in tandem with the full on what you would have to do from A to Z for a peer to peer fundraising campaign, if you were doing it all by yourself, without any wonderful 501 commons to support you. Okay. So that sound good? What do we want to walk away from this? Or what would I like you to take away from this? The end of the hour, at one o'clock, you will know what peer to peer fundraising is. I think until I started diving into this, I was a little confused myself because there's a lot of words out there flying around. There are a lot of platforms out there flying around, a lot of people trying to sell you stuff and da da da. So I want you to know what it is and how it differs from crowdfunding, even though that's a very becoming a very slight difference, okay? I also want to go through the steps to creating a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Uh, soup to nuts, what do I have to do to make this thing happen at my organization? And as always, I want to give you some things to think about, um, especially if you're not too familiar with peer-to-peer, -to -peer, if you're not sure if it's right for your organization, if leadership is maybe pressuring you and you need to be able to respond and say, okay, this is what we need in order to do this thing, those are the tools I'd like you to walk away with. Um, anybody, miss? am I missing anything you all want to know? Go ahead and feel free to type that into the chat box and Austin's going to relay it to me. Um, we want to make this interactive and benefit you as much as possible. Okay? Everybody ready? All right, let's go. First of all, have to use your mice. <laughs> We're going to do a poll. Woohoo! I would love to know in the crowd how many of you are veteran at peer to peer? How many of you have done a few campaigns? And how many of you are just learning peer to peer fundraising? Go ahead and choose your box. I know Austin's putting them up on the screen. Stacey, how about you? I'm just learning. Just learning. Okay. How are we doing? Can everyone see the poll? So we've got six people who are just learning and about three who've done a few campaigns, no veterans. Phew. <laughs> so, um, no one to call me on it if I make a misstep, right? No, I'm messing with you. Um, you can always call me out for anything when I'm when we're working together to learn. Um, all right. So, what is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Um, I'm not going to ask y'all how old you are <laughs> because that wouldn't be cool. But if you have ever participated or have kids that participated or parents that participated in a AIDS walk, in a bike-a-thon, a bowl-a-thon, where you went out with the little sponsor sheets, right, and got people to sponsor you for 10 cents a mile, God knows what it is now, you've done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is where an organization leverages commitment and the passion of its allies and volunteers and donors to you to raise money from their networks peer to peer it's often called friend to friend or person to person all those mean the same thing you as you as a ally of a nonprofit or a cause are raising money for that cause from your network of friends acquaintances work colleagues etc Okay, now what is peer-to-peer -peer versus crowdfunding? What do y'all think? It's a very small difference. Crowdfunding, and this is frankly a lot about software, is where peer-to-peer -peer and the organization putting out a campaign of its own can occur at the same time. So, so, so. Out there, uh, oh, great. Thank you for muting whoever that was. Um, 
So let's think about what peer-to-peer -peer means. The American Cancer Society does a relay for life. And it's funny, I was thinking back on all the things I give to, and it turns out so many of them are peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Can't they do relay for life in many, many communities across the country where they ask their constituents to ask their friends and family to sponsor them walking around the track inside at a stadium over one weekend. My friend Wendy does it in Renton in June. Um, no Shave November, where the men uh, don't shave for a month for health research for their health causes and collect money from their friends. The Ice Bucket Challenge. Who remembers the Ice Bucket Challenge? Yes, I do, certainly. Of course, everyone, every board in the country wanted their own nonprofit to do something similar. Um, but it turns out, you know, it kind of started doing organically and was two people suffering, whose husbands were suffering from ALS, challenging each other in, in Boston, and it grew from there. So these can be accomplished through any number of platforms, right? And we'll, there's the gamut, we'll get to it in a few minutes, of the very you know top dollar, really uh, bells and whistles, all the way to Facebook. Um, now crowdfunding is something that, where again, the organization can run its own campaign. But now, the ALS Association, who was the beneficiary of the Ice Bucket Challenge, by collecting all the money that was get raised by those folks dumping ice on their head, now they have taken it and run with it, good for them. And August, which is when the original Ice Bucket Challenge happened, is now ALS Awareness Month, and they have a, a campaign called Every Gift Adds Up that they run in August, in addition to asking their constituents to ask their friends for money, the ALS runs a campaign in August that is every gift counts in and of themselves, okay? Does that make sense to you all? Uh, the reading I've done says the lines are really blurred, um, but if, you know, if you wanna get specific about the terminology, those are what peer-to-peer versus, peer -peer versus crowdfunding are. Okay, so we're focusing on peer-to-peer -to -peer today, and what do we need to do to run a peer-to-peer -peer campaign? Well, we do need to have a software platform. And again, like I said, these can be anywhere from bells and whistles to Facebook, which is now free, okay? So here's the things to think about. A good peer-to-peer -peer software platform will give you professionally designed templates for your campaign page, your campaign page, where a donor will sign up to become a fundraising partner. Okay, so the organization has a campaign page that potential partners, fundraisers, allies, whatever you want to call them, go to get information and sign up to raise money on your behalf. Those, the software platform needs to provide auto-generated fundraising pages for those allies. I'm going to call them allies. They're the folks out there raising money for you from their networks that they can use to customize. And if any of you have ever done this, you know that you can go and create a page and tell your own story about your interest in the cause. I did one for Fair Start last year, and I just talked about how mad it makes me that people are homeless and that they can't you know, take care of their families or whatever the issue happens to be uh, when I created my own page to raise money for Fair Start. Um, there are often inclusion of you know, the, the thermometer, <laughs> the progress bar, the percentage raised that keep donors motivated. There's, there are, your platform should have a way for you to share on social media, the ally to share on social media their campaign so that they can get it out there to their networks, right? And to make this effective, your allies are gonna want to talk about, like, like I did, I'm using myself as a guinea pig, um, why they care about your mission. You know, why are they mad that animals get mistreated? Why do they want cancer to be cured? What's personal about it to them? Because most people come to nonprofits, as I'm sure you all know, with the story. Something has motivated them to ally themselves with a mission or a cause and want to raise money to make that change. Either bring things into the world or take things out of them like cancer, right? Um, so back to the software platform, 
social share social media sharing you need to be able to track you the nonprofit development staff need to be able to track and report so you can measure how well your campaign's doing a campaign dashboard for yourself is another important thing so you can keep an eye on the playing right and finally, auto-generated thank you emails that will come out when people give to your allies' campaigns. They will get a thank you from the organization as well as from their, the person that's raising money from them. Okay, so far so good? Okay, thank you, Stacy, my barometer of one. <laughs> okay, now, what next we need to pick a campaign type and theme. All right, so there are two campaign types in general, and they kind of work together, there are the celebration campaigns. So you've all seen them probably by now. I'm having a birthday. Instead of presents, I want gifts made to nonprofit X. Right? All right. And then there are the ones that are in a time frame, you know, like the ALS August campaign. In one month, we want to raise X number of dollars for ALS research. August, August 31st is our campaign, which kind of feeds into the next one. Um, you'll choose a time frame. Am I on, on track with my slides? I think I hit an extra button, sorry. Um, you need to choose a timeline and figure out how, you know, how that works. Is there an urgency factor to it? Like, you know, get big is one day, and in one day, if we can raise X amount of money, right, this will happen. Um, a theme. A lot of people struggle with this. I don't know how y'all are out there in the webinar land, um, but there are a lot of suggestions I have for you. And by the way, at the end of the presentation, there's this uh, slide of resources, and many of the documents that I read and looked at to put this together will be there. And some of the suggestions for a theme, I'm just going to read them to you because they're right here. You want to talk about your community. Who are you serving? You know, where are they? What, how old are they? Are they, you know, specific, are they suffering from specific problems? It kind of goes in the hand in hand with the need because there's a problem you're solving, right? Or a challenge, you might want to call it. What is that challenge? How is it affecting your, the people who you serve, going back to number one? What are the outcomes if you, if, and I'm using grant language a little bit here, but what happens if they aren't served, right? What's the impact? And what's the solution that you and your donors can partner on? How can you prevent this or assist this impact from to happen? Another idea is a special project that might be coming up, right? What comes to mind? Let's see. Uh, if you're perhaps in the middle of a capital campaign and you say, okay, all the funding that we raise on this day is going to help us install uh, air conditioning. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking off the top of my head, right? But you can attach it to an event or an anniversary or uh, something that's going to happen to your organization, right? Say it's a your uh, arts organization and you've just been nominated for the Arts Fund. Um, our organization of the year award. You can say, okay, the day that we receive this award, we want to establish a fund to increase our the ability to do innovative work. So all the money raised on May 15th will go towards the new works fund as we graciously, gratefully accept this award from the arts fund or the governor's office or whatever it ends up being. Okay, how are we doing? Am I making sense? I can't. Uh, Austin, anybody have questions yet? We doing okay? Uh, not, not that I've seen, I think. Okay, great. Wanted to keep the temperature on. Um, all right, so now I'm on to the right slide. <laughs> so next steps are to create two sets of messages for your campaign. And the first one's going to be, like we discussed, for your campaign page. Your nonprofit's going to have a campaign page that you promote and that you that serves the purpose of asking people to raise money on your behalf. Uh, so what are some things we might want to talk about? We went over them. Your beneficiaries, 
where you work, what you do, um, what your impact is, and what your vision is. You know, we want to see hunger, no more hunger. We want to see all animals cared for. You can tell I'm a big one for homelessness and, and animals. Those are my my heartens right there, right? Um, and then end with a call to action. You're going to want to ask people to sign up to help us fundraise on this day during this month for this cause. Okay? Has to be easy. Has to be clear. You have to tell them exactly what you want from them. Okay? They are the heroes. Make it personally. We cannot do this without your help, which is true, right? We need to partner with you to make this change in the community, to make this happen. Okay. Something to remember, your donor management system, and I'm sure that there is a wide spectrum out there of what people use, may already have this in place for you, okay? So check it out. Um, in one of the articles with resources that I'm gonna give you at the end, there's a long list of the donor management systems that do have these pages plugged, ready to play, okay? So you may already have it and don't know it. If you're on a lower budget, you can use some of the pretty readily available online tools to create graphics and um, logos and banners for Facebook and whatever else you need on an, uh, a website like Canva, okay? I've used Canva, it's a zap, zap, zap. You just tell what you want it does for you for free. So check that out. Here's what you're gonna need to have for your campaign page. Graphics to share on social media. So again, this is usually, there are images, there are banner size, um, you know, you're going to want a logo if you don't have one already, but you never, you know, who knows? Maybe you don't or you want a different one. Do you want to brand this campaign specifically? Okay, great. Do it. Um, you're going to need images and information for your website's homepage. And those will maybe some of the same, but they may also be connected to a story that you want to tell to get people intrigued to sign up to help you raise money, one of your clients, or something about the impact you do in the community, right? You'll need to have some ads. We are doing this one day of giving. We are doing this one month of giving. Won't you join us um, and help us raise money so we can end cancer? You're going to need content and images for email blasts. And there's a, everyone, there are a lot of opinions about this right now, but in general, the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we prepare, we execute, and then we thank. So you're going to probably start seeing give big emails coming over your transom actually pretty soon. There's usually an email that an e-blast that goes out to announce, you know, this is happening. Would you consider supporting us on this day, this week, this month? Then when it there's the kickoff, you'll do an e-blast. Fundraising is going on. Here's how you can donate. and Here's what your gift will do. And then at the end, there's thank you so much for your gift. How would you like to remain engaged? Here's how much we raised. I'm not in order, of course, mind you, but those are the general content of what you'll need. And you're going to need this for yourself and your volunteers, which we'll get to in just a minute, okay? Thank you emails for your folks who fundraise for you and for yourself, the organization. When I say yourself, that's what I mean. And communications for your fundraisers to share in their campaigns. So a lot of folks like to send out their own thank yous or they want to be able to tell, okay, you know, the Cancer Society, I'm, I'm part of the campaign that the Cancer Society is putting on. Together we've raised half of our million dollar goal, won't you help us, or thank you for helping us, or, you know, this is what's going on as opposed to will you give and then fall them off the radar, right? Is that clear to everybody? So far so good, I know this is a lot to throw at you. Okay, and this is what we talked about here to four has been for your organization's page and and operations. It's all you also need to provide that for your little your body of fundraisers. And hopefully it's not a little body, hopefully it's a 
huge overwhelming mass of a tsunami of people who want to help you raise money, right? So a key task is to develop a toolkit for your fundraisers. Give big people, you have one. 501 Commons prepared for you. So if you, and if you aren't in Give Big, maybe we can, you know, you can find someone who does and use that as a model because it's very well done. Your, so your full, your ugh, toolkit, excuse me, will have campaign instructions, campaign page instructions. So how is this going to happen? Stacy, because she's in the room, recruits me to raise money for hands and hands. Hands and hands. I say, I'm fired up, Stacy. I want to go raise money from all my friends because I think you do awesome work and I want to support you. So Stacy is going to prepare for me uh, instructions on how I can go online to their website and create the Angela Beard campaign for Hands to Hands. All right, so I'm going to go, uh, she's going to send me this and I'm going to be, I'm going to look in my email and I'm going to say, oh, thank you, Stacy. Now I know exactly what to do. And those instructions tell you, you know, where you need to go, how you create your page, encourages you to use images and stories to talk about your my experience with hands to hands or why I care about what they do, right? Um, and that's the first thing that the, the nonprofit needs to provide for all their wonderful fundraisers. Um, you're going to also want to give them messages to share, introductory emails, so. I'm going to get fired up and email all 175 of my, well, I have more friends than that, but you know what I'm saying. Look, I'm going to create 175 emails to the people I know are most likely to give. What do I tell them? Well, Stacy's included that. And so it's going to be something like, you guys know that I care about hands to hands, hands in hands. Am I getting it right? Hands and hands. Hands and hands. And what they do, and this month I am raising money for them, and I'm asking you to join me with a gift of X. Of course, this is a very first I personalize it, right? Either a gift of five dollars, or a gift of fifty dollars, or no gift is too small, or would you consider a monthly gift? All personalized. Um, so she's going to give me information on how to thank them, perhaps a template, or encourage me to create my own and provide me with a few prompts as to that, right? Um, she's going to provide me with graphics so that I can go to Facebook and post that I am participating in the Hands and Hands campaign of 2019. And anyone who wants to give can use this link to go to their, directly to their website and give to my campaign. She's going to give me templates for all of the above, the email thank yous, the email requests, logos, images, whatever I ask for basically that will make, my, make me feel good about my page, make me feel like I've done it well. And then some FAQ. So, so I have you know donor Dave over in Bellevue who's never heard of, of Hands and Hands, but he is a good friend of mine and he wants to support my work. So Stacy's gonna give me a sheet of FAQ about who they are, what they do, how the person to person fundraising campaign is working, you know, how can give, what will happen after they do, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that a new donor might want to know. All right. Everybody with me so far? Doing okay? It looks like we have someone who's raising their hand if you want to. Yeah, ask let's have question. questions. Austin just going to read it to yeah. me, so there's going to be silence right. for a minute. Um, all right, well, I guess let's keep going for now and I'll get back to you. Okay. So we can all, we can, this is your opportunity to encourage your fundraisers to be really creative. Okay. They can include video. They, I've seen people show photos of their relatives who lost to cancer or show photos of their relatives who we saved from cancer. Right? Um, you can tell a story. You can shoot a video of your own. Um, that's going to make it more personal and make people more likely to give. Even if they weren't already inclined by virtue of being your friend, it adds fuel to the fire. Right? So, 
once you finish your toolkit for your fundraisers, we launch. Yay! We have our day, our month, our event of giving. It's really important to remember that your fundraisers are going to be out there, you know, beating the drum for you, and they need to have someone who's going to be super responsive for their questions, if they have tech support issues, you know, any snags they run into, and to keep them motivated. We want to keep them rolling. We want to cheerleader a little bit, quite frankly. We want to update again so that they, Stacy's going to tell me, oh, we're halfway to our goal and it's only noon. I'm going to get on Facebook and say, they're only halfway to their goal, it's only noon. If you give now, we'll be that much closer, right? Sometimes uh, the point person in your organization will share stories about a fundraiser. You know, fabulous Angela Beard raised, met her goal by noon. Woohoo, right? Let's everybody try to do the same in, in wonderful, diplomatic, encouraging language. Your day of giving comes and goes. Then we have a campaign wrap up. We want to celebrate with all the people that made it successful your staff, your board, and your donors and your allies because you all were awesome and raised a lot of money, right? Next piece is super critical. A lot of people approach these peer-to-peer -peer with the goal of not only raising money in the cash to put in the bank, but also to increase their donor base. You're going to acquire a lot of new donors through this kind of work. And it's so important that once the, the big event is over, that we don't just let them fade away, as so who used to say. We want to steward and educate our new donors. A lot of development professionals now are putting together a welcome packet. They're sending out information right away on the organization, perhaps inviting them to an event or to some kind of way to engage, to let them know, to talk with them and know more about why they care about the mission and where their place might be in the organization. And if they, for example, my friend Dave, who didn't know anything about hands and hands, he was giving because he knows me and because I asked him, that's a prime opportunity to educate him about the work that the organization does and see if he wants to become further involved. Okay, so you can do this with, like I said, newsletters, invitations to events, welcome packet that, you know, kind of shows them around the organization in more depth. This is what we do. This is where we do it. This is who you can talk to about us. Here are some opportunities for you to get involved. I will be reaching out on X day to see how you're doing, how you, you know, how you feel about us, see if you want to become further engaged. So, okay. yeah. Um, so we do have a question now. Uh, okay. Whitney asks, in regards to give big peer-to-peer -peer giving, should we provide supporters with the templates or toolkit give big provided us as an organization? Does the toolkit is supposed to, yes, it is supposed to include, Whitney, um, all of that, all of the above. So, yes, absolutely. I'm assuming that you have constituents who want to raise money on your behalf. Yeah, that's what it's for. Hello. Is that helpful? Thanks, so. You are welcome. Yeah, please, the good big people did all that work for you. So use it and steal from it when you do your own campaign, right? All right. Sit down. Let's go ahead and take your seats when you're ready. Um, and we'll go on to some considerations that you should con considerations that you should consider. <laughs> considerations you should deliberate really and think about before you go into Full on, we're going to do peer to peer without thinking through. So, what do you have to think about? First of all, do you have the time? Hopefully, after these remarks, you figured out that, you know, peer to peer isn't just sending out one email to your constituents and hoping that they come to your website, sign up, go forth, and raise millions of dollars completely untouched. That's not going to happen, right? So the rule of thumb is that you should expect someone in your organization 
to spend about 20 hours a month. So what is that? Five hours a week managing and supporting a crowdsourced campaign. We've got to keep people happy and engaged. So I would suggest to you that it's not five month hours on Monday morning, but a pretty regular attention across the week on a daily basis, checking in with your fundraisers, seeing what you, they need, looking at your dashboard for your results and sharing them, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You're also going to need somebody who can be responsive in terms of technical support, right? You know, my web page has fallen down. It's gone. I don't know what to do. Everybody wants to give us money and I don't have any way for them to do it. Well, that's not something that can wait for a few days. It has to, you have to have someone who doesn't freak out by technology and is pretty responsive, you know, and this isn't meant to point fingers at anybody. This is more to acknowledge that nonprofits, workers are overloaded, right? We have so much going on and we don't want to set up, set ourselves up to fail with realist, unrealistic expectations. Okay. Um, Can I jump in with a quick question? Yeah. Please do. Um, so Aaron asks, with regards to the 20 hours a month figure you mentioned, are mm -hmm. you talking about the whole year or just in preparation for campaigns? Uh, that's in preparation and during the campaign itself, not all year. So it might be, you know, uh, say, say you, like, I'm going to use Give Big as an example because it's in front of us and it's uh, something that I've been working with, so I'm pretty familiar. So Give Big is May 8th. And we started encouraging people to begin their campaigns for matching gifts and for peer-to-peer -peer allies in their organizations to step up to help them raise money uh, end of March. So that puts us about, about six weeks out of the actual day, right? Well, if you back up to January, that's when we were training the nonprofits, we were teaching them, giving them their toolkits and you know, putting it all together. So, and that's a huge <laughs> 501 Commons with about, shoot, they've got including 35 or 40 volunteers, experienced fundraising volunteers helping them out, right? So if that gives you some idea, five months out of the campaign, we were starting to work on it. Um, I would suggest you would, I mean, Give Big is huge. You know, they've got messaging and all the, matching and the peer-to-peer -peer and they're looking for companies to do pages and all when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer in the real world only the largest organizations are going to be able to have that kind of the united ways the seattle operas are going to do that um so temper what i'm saying with a real consideration of what you can do if you can only do peer-to-peer -peer without a match or you know, if you are going to do one day instead of one month, you'll be able to adjust your timeline accordingly. But I would encourage you to think out, you know, at least three or four months ahead, giving, giving Tuesday in December is another example. Most people start preparing in September, end of August, September. And I would su submit to you that the 20 hours a week carries on through that whole time. Is that helpful? Twenty hours a month. You're. Thank you for correcting me. No, twenty hours a month. Okay, leadership. Who's going to run the campaign? We've talked about a lot of this already. We've got. We need a cheerleader. We need someone to take care of charge of the details. And in many cases, it's been suggested that you form a committee of three to seven people. And why? Because you need a lot of work. You need a lot of help. But you also can kind of expect, it's kind of like an, for an event committee, right? If people serve on that committee, you can expect them to take a lead in doing their own peer-to-peer -peer campaign and acting as models and advisors to other folks who are interested but maybe don't have the experience or whatever, right? Okay, what else do we have to think about? How are you going to support your fundraisers? Okay, like I said, we talked about this a little bit already. They're going to need a lot of hands handling. We don't just say, hey, here's classy and here are the instructions for setting up your page. Let me know how much money you raise in a month. No, no. 
you've got to have you've got to spend the time to tra train them how to use the tool. You've got to support them through the process, help them to set some goals, help them to tell their story. You know, maybe even find some quotes for them. Once the campaign is in, we celebrate them too. Again, you're all smart fundraisers. You know, we don't just dump the our volunteers and allies when they have brought in the money for us. But figure that into your calculations, right? How much do you expect to raise? Um, this article that I stole this from, quite candidly, it had a really pretty good discussion about this when you break it into units. All right, so say you, my favorite example, say you work with dogs and it costs $50 a day to kennel a dog at a shelter. Of course, we want to move the dog out of the shelter and eventually, that's our vision, an empty kennel. But in the meantime, we've got to raise $50 a day a dog. Okay, well, let's do the math. If we have 200, do 200 dogs at $50 a day, well, we want to raise $10,000. Is that helpful? That's a good way of looking at it, rather than just kind of pulling something out and oh, I think we can raise fifty thousand dollars. Well, can you? <laughs> how are you? You know, what's it going to be for? How are you going to tell the donors of the story, the donor, the story of how it's used? You know, how are you going to report to them? How are you going to measure success? Your little dog thermometer going up. You could do some really fun stuff with that, right? A bone or a, a treat with the dog chasing it up the thermometer and he gets it at the top when you've raised your kennel money. Anyhow, um, it's a good idea to think of it in units. You know, one unit of what we provide to clients is what we're trying to raise today. Do you have, are the people in your network being asked to participate where they are? And again, there's something to consider is their technological expertise and just plain and simple tools, okay? so. If you have a really complex platform like Classy or one of the, race, you know, I don't know if Race is that says, but one of the really high-end ones, and you're don't, you have people that want to help but don't have computers at home, they just have, they work on their phones, that's not going to them where they are, right? And you're, it's going to be more difficult for them to participate and for you to raise money. Um, and do you have the technology know-how, right? Are you going to be able to troubleshoot? appropriately and responsibly when somebody, oh, you're shaking your head back there. And if you can't, is there someone who can? Is that available in your organization? Do you have a volunteer that might be willing to sell your committee and help with the technology? I know you're grimacing, but like I said, it's something to consider, right? Maybe crowdfunding isn't for everyone. Maybe peer-to-peer -peer isn't for everyone. These are the things to think through before you spend a lot of money on it or make a big budget commitment and then, oh yeah, whoops, I guess maybe that wasn't such a good idea, right? Saying no is okay too. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna open it up for questions. And as we said earlier, you can either, there's a couple of ladies in the room and then online folks can type it in for Austin who will share it with everyone. Yeah, we, we have another question at the moment. Um, Aaron asks, do you have any good resources for setting up those thermometer type meters? I probably do. But the reason I say probably, Aaron, is because I have so many resources that I would have, I'm going to come back through them and provide you with one that will. All right. I've read so much in preparing this conversation that I will find it in one of those articles and and or websites and send it out to the whole group. And Austin will remind me. <laughs> Got it. We had a burning question, and I don't know if any of you noticed that I've started using Padlet in advance to make sure that y'all get your questions covered. But thank you to whoever submitted one who was asking about if you need to prepare your volunteers a kit for their, let me find it. For their participation, I'm going to read it to you all. My constituents may not know what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is. How do I get them to do it? Do I need to create a mini campaign to my constituents? Let my constituents know that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising exists so that they will participate. I myself 
hope that you've gotten your answer for that today. But if not, I would say the answer, if you have the bandwidth, is yes. Absolutely. You know, that's a great way of presenting another opportunity to engage your donors in a different way than maybe some of them are who have those skills and who are more comfortable in front of a computer will do. I myself in the past have not often had that kind of bandwidth. So I've kind of done an environmental scan and said, okay, I'm looking for people with two qualifications. They really care about us and they have enough tech savvy to agree to do this without, you know, completely freaking out. Um, but if you have the opportunity to do a mini campaign to your constituents explaining peer to peer and what it would entail and ask for volunteers, I would absolutely encourage you to do that. Hands down. Yes. Other questions? Y'all ready to go out and take over the world one peer at a time? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing any new questions in the chat at the moment. Um, so, oh, maybe maybe another one is coming up. Okay. All right. So um, Aaron asks to send a supporter to send your supporters frequently asked questions, resources to share, etc. What's the best medium uh, like Dropbox files, email chat attachments, etc. My experience is with email attachments and these the whatever platform you choose when you set up your campaign page, there will generally be a functionality for communicating with all of your ally volunteers fundraisers that you can you can send them all oh, the it's it's endless you can send them a video explaining things you can send them attachments you can send them a simple email um, whatever you want to do and of course it works one on one as well um, I, my experience is that it depends on what they're asking for um, is that helpful to you I don't you know it's kind of a case by case scenario so if you want to uh, Aaron, chat about it some more too. I'm going to go on to the next slide, everybody. I am always available um, as a resource to you for anything fundraising. Here's my contact information, and I often do one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations or um, you know brain dumps or brainstorming. Is this a crazy idea? How could I make this work? So please feel free to reach out. Again, it's free. Uh, I love my job. <laughs> I get paid to help people raise money to change the world. Um, so let me look for the, the thermometer um, app for you. And if you want to talk more about how you communicate with your volunteers, uh, let's do that offline. If what uh, I give you isn't enough. Austin, um, you have more. Yes. Yeah, so will, will the PowerPoint slides be shared with everyone in the next few yes, days? Absolutely. This is being recorded, and as soon as our IT people make it pretty, we will send the slides and the recording of the presentation to everyone who registered. All right? Anything else before we set you all free for your Tuesday afternoon? Okay, well, like I said, feel free to reach out anytime. I know a lot of you are in Give Big. There are 14,000 nonprofits participating, so if I can be of any assistance, please let me know. We want to chat peer to peer or any other fundraising thing. You have my 411. <laughs> and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Our next workshop will be the 14th of May, and it's the last part of the case statement series talking about evaluating your work to donors, the, in, talking about the impact of donors and evaluation for yourself. So hopefully you'll be able to join 14th of May at noon and you'll all be getting emails about it too. Have a fabulous Tuesday and thanks for coming.